So it has been quite some time since I did one of these random stuff type videos, but now I think it's time for one again. So let's do something. Yeah. No, I do something, you watch it, and then maybe you do it too, if you want to. At least that's the plan or the idea of this. So, yeah. When I upgraded my camera, I also upgraded my tripod to something better, but that means that I now have a tripod left over, and I have cameras left over. So I have my old camera and my phone, but as this one is already, I don't know, seven or eight years old, and camera sensors have been developed quite a bit since then, it turns out that my phone shoots better video than my old camera. The only problem is that phones usually can't be attached to tripods or quick release plates, so I need to make a holder for it. That should work. So this should be big enough. Okay, now I need to cut a slot into the block that's exactly the width of the phone. Now roughly center the caliper and directly scratch into the wood with it. With a pencil I can make the marks visible. And the depth of the slot has to be the thickness of the phone on the side. But I can't just measure it like this because the phone is curved on the back and well it's thicker in the middle than it's on the side. So in order to measure it correctly I laid it flat down on the table and use this part of the caliper. Once everything was set up I just needed to hog out the material. Alright, the fit is pretty good. Now I can glue another piece of plywood on top. And now it fits like this. Just a friction fit. I also glued on another piece on the bottom drilled a hole in the center and threaded it out, so now I can attach my quick release plates from the tripods. Finally I just rounded over all the edges and now it's ready to use. Alright, and now I have two cameras and can do this all the time. Great! But seriously, the mount came out pretty good and, well, I'll see what I can come up with using two cameras. Except for switching back and forth. Okay, and what follows now wasn't planned at all. So just a few minutes ago when I was sanding this new mount on my disc sander, I had the dust collection running and suddenly it scared me like a lot when it made a horrible cracking noise and threw this piece out. Right through the transition here. And it totally broke the plexiglass, which apart has to lay around in the shop somewhere. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Well, um, yeah, that was kind of scary. Actually, very scary. But after it spit this piece out, it kept running relatively smoothly. So I don't think there's any harm to the impeller, but I really have to take a look at it. Really didn't want to do that right now, but I have no choice. Hmm. 
Now it really pays off having made all these knobs to hold the housing on. Alright, here you can see where they broke off and that's how they looked like before. And the reason why they broke off is I think they are under constant vibration and air gets pushed to the outside and hits the surface here, wants to pull it outwards and the glue or the wood just couldn't handle this over time. So now I think they are doing more harm than good. Some of you may now ask why I installed these there in the first place. Well, it had to do with stability reasons and there is no short answer for this. If you want to know it, you should watch the video where I made this impeller and there you will see it. But now that I know they are doing more harm than good, I just break all of them off and then put the whole dust collector back together. Oh yeah, they are all pretty loose. Now that I removed all of these, you don't need to worry that all the stability is gone because they didn't really add stability. The stability comes from these thins being glued into grooves and that's the key point. If these would break, then it would be because of shear forces. Imagine you want to rip this piece apart like so. And you can try it, it's just not possible by hand. And that's just 3mm in the F. Here I have 6mm and it's also curved which adds another little bit of stability. But, well, that just won't break that easily. So it can still handle all the load from being a impeller. I only need to rebalance it, but that's pretty easy. While the glue of the new counterweights is drying, I can work on the transition, which obviously needs to be replaced. I want to replace this here with 3mm NDF because plexiglass is not the right material for this. Over time it developed a lot of micro cracks and already broke once, which I take back together, but NDF can be bent around this radius without cracking. But therefore I have to widen the slot a little bit. The easiest way for me to do that was using the CNC, and so I didn't have to make a whole new piece. Time for a test. Alright, moving on to the bench, which is always full of my drills, so I really need to make a holder for them now. With a little bit of testing I found out the right spacing for all the small ones. And just the bigger one needs a little bit of a wider gap. With this rough layout I could measure the distance from the drill to the edge and in between. And I noted them down. And now I can cut this piece of plywood to size. Hmm. I used the bandsaw first to leave the offcut as big as possible and safe on wood this way. With the table saw I then cut to final size. Now I can mark the correct spacing. And as you can see, I just failed measuring and had to redo this. No big deal. As my force nub was too dull, I used the hole saw the same size instead. Also note the smaller hole over the saw curve. It clears all the sawdust and makes the hole saw working so much better with a nice surface and no burn marks.
As you can see, they are all a little angled, so I think I'm going to mount to the wall a little bit angled too. So that should compensate for that. Now to mount it here in the wall, I have to make sure that I can still open the drill press for changing the belt speed. So right about here is a good position. And while I was at it, I also made a very simple holder for this guy. Another tool that's always on the workbench because it has no holder yet is this hand plane. And unfortunately making a holder for this is not as easy as it was for my wooden one. Because it's just shaped differently and this design won't work on this one. So I think I'm just going to make a little shelf so it can sit on right here. Alright, you could call this done, but I want to try something. Aha, <laughs> cool, it worked. I also added two pins here and together with these they prevent the hand plane from falling off the shelf. Ah, so much better. Wait. Yeah, so much better. Especially the holder for the drills. I should have done it a long time ago, but we tend to always say that when we finished a shop organization project, so, well, whatever. Now it's finished. But still, I really recommend making a tool wall like this because it makes cleaning the shop so much easier when you know where everything belongs and the next time you need it, you exactly know where to find it. So, yeah, really recommend it. And for now, I think, this is the end. While the glue of the new counterweights is drying, I can work on the transition, which obviously needs to be replaced. Oh, and do you know how effective dust collection is if you forgot to hook up the hose again? Yeah, not really. <laughs> I also added two pins here and they prevent the hand plane from sliding out. Well, I, <clears throat> I should have done it a long time ago, but we always say that after we finished a shop organization project.